The Raspberry Pi was an incredibly cheap board, ideal for home projects. And in mid-2012, RetroPie was born, allowing anyone to have a console emulation box in their front room. All that was needed was a microSD card, a power adapter, and maybe a nice case. Needs a sticker. But with amazing projects such as the Pi Force and that so-called chip shortage, the Pi is becoming rare, and prices are insane for this now very aging board. Today we'll look at three cheap alternatives for RetroPie. Welcome to Team Pandori. Subscribe. First, we'll check out some Emuelic Android boxes. A good example is the Super Console X, and it uses a similar front end to RetroPie. Wireless controllers usually need a dongle, and all games are stored on the microSD. The systems that these emulate really depend on the strength of the specs. 16-bit consoles will run flawlessly, but we can even stretch to Commodore Amiga or PSP, for which a number of games will work quite well. Point-and-click adventure games such as Sam and Max Hit the Road are playable in ScumVM, as are many arcade games with MAME or Final Burn Neo, but don't expect to play any 3D arcade titles such as Tekken or Killer Instinct. But the beauty is, for only $35, we can buy a 128 gig version, which comes with a case, power supply, and all we need to do is get a compatible controller and dongle. Make sure you grab one with at least a 905X3 chip, or if you want to push it, go for the Odroid N2+. This one can be overclocked, and it can play the most difficult to run Amiga software at full speed. And Nintendo 64? Sega Dreamcast and Naomi? Sega Atomic Wave? And upscaled PSP? It's also capable of GameCube, but performance is hit and miss. Also, many handhelds use similar chips. It's crazy to think that the tech is so advanced that we could play all of our systems while sitting on the bus. And some of these handhelds look drop-dead gorgeous. Next up is the Pandora Box, a plug-and-play system and extremely easy to use. The thing is, they're not made to be altered, so even if something doesn't work the way we want it to, we can't change settings. The bar top here is designed for the Pandora Box, which together with the monitor gives you a cheap arcade experience in your own home. Just select the game, and then play. If you don't like your display to be stretched, just make sure to get one that can either switch aspect ratio, or one that's compatible with Pandori. There are even boxes that have two-player PSP games like Tekken 6. But remember, if there are glitches, there's little to nothing we can do about them. For real arcade cabinets, there are these Jammer variants, which are similar except for this edge here. They work for old arcade monitors, but also have VGA or HDMI for modern displays. The console experience is available too, but remember not all controllers are compatible. Last up, the PC. You can get some incredible deals on auction sites, ideal for the tinkerer, as condition may vary. But if you want something new, a mini PC nowadays is incredible value for money. We can have one with DDR5 memory, M2 SSD, with Windows 11 Pro delivered at around $150. They're capable machines and can be extremely tiny. With only a monitor, keyboard and mouse, it can make a great family PC. Good for YouTube, shopping, maybe some Netflix. We're also good for Windows software, as well as Steam. Even GTA 5 is possible. But what if you want a RetroPie-like interface? Well, we could either use RetroBat or Batacera, which can be installed onto a USB stick, or you can emulate most systems from the earliest 8-bit computers, to Dreamcast, upscale PSP, and beyond. There is so much choice for emulation outside the aging Raspberry Pi, but ultimately, it doesn't matter what you play on, as long as you have fun. If you want the most versatile system available, a PC is the best choice, and there are portable versions too. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like, and maybe share it with your friends. This has been Emi Chicken of Team Pandori, and I'll catch you in the next one. Ta-ra!